Hello, and welcome to the Spline Central Data Lineage Tracking, not only for Spark. My name is Alex. I'm a software engineer at APSA and the co-creator of a Spline project. Before we move to the main topic of this presentation, let me say a few words about the company and our team. AMSA is one of the biggest banks in South Africa and the African continent. For recent years, APSA has been actively modernizing its data platform. The new platform is built using open source software stack, primarily Hadoop, Spark, and related tools. Our team, called Big Data R&D and Tooling Team, is responsible for creating that platform in the first place and also developing tools and libraries that are either missing in the open source stack or need to be modified to meet specific company requirements. Since the company is using a lot of open source software, collaboration with the open source community and contribution back became a part of the company's strategy and the culture. Many of the projects that we create are open sourced and hosted on the GitHub space called APSA OSS. Among those projects are Spline, which is the topic of our today's presentation. Kubernetes Global Load Balancer is another, another interesting project that was created by APSA, but now is a cloud native computing foundation sandbox project. It focuses on load balancing traffic across geographically dispersed Kubernetes clusters. Then we have Cobrix, a mainframe bridge to Spark, Spot, a Spark performance tuning utility, and a lot of others. Now let's get back to the main topic of today's presentation, data lineage tracking. So what is data lineage first of all, and why it is important? In recent years, the rapid adoption of big data and data lakes naturally resulted in growing entropy in large organizations' data systems. It's often very difficult to have a clear picture of all the data pipelines created by different teams and currently running somewhere in production how one data set affects another, and what happens if there is an error somewhere. Are the pipelines connected correctly and are actually doing what they're supposed to do? How do you make sure that your reports are based on complete and correct data? How do you prove compliance to the regulator? In order to answer all of those questions and many others, you need to have a reliable way to automatically document your processes and trace your data flow. This is essentially what data lineage is. The data lineage is basically a path that shows how the data flows between data sources through the different systems in time and how it is transformed on the way. So how would one go about implementing lineage tracking? Can you buy a boxed product or a service that solves the lineage problem for you? Maybe, it depends. The problem is not new and might even look simple, except that in fact it is deceptively complex. The lack of widely adopted industry standards for exchanging lineage information between the data processors and lineage collectors makes the existence of fully automated third-party data lineage tracking solutions practically impossible. Well, some data lineage, uh, sorry, some uh, data processing and governance systems do offer lineage tracking capabilities, but First of all, they are often commercial solutions, not open sourced. And second, most importantly, they often only track lineage of data that they process. So this feature is usually bound to the product itself and does not really span across heterogeneous data pipelines that often consists of many different technologies and tools. Some might be legacy, some in-house build, some third-party applications, etc. And this is usually the case for large real-life data organizations. To track the data lineage truly end-to-end, -end, we need a solution that is flexible and extendable enough to accommodate a wide range of technologies and specific use cases of a particular organization. Here's where the Spline project gets into this stage. Spline is an open source project that aims to help companies to build their own end-to-end -end data lineage tracking solution with minimum efforts. Spline was created in 2018 as a POC project to capture data lineage specifically from Apache Spark jobs and has been presented on previous Spark Summit events. But since that time, we have figured out that only tracking Spark data lineage is not enough. 
So the project goal was expanded to cover the end-to-end -end data lineage tracking requirements at the level of the entire organization. We started calling it the central spline project. In order to play a role of a central service, spline has to meet certain requirements. First of all, it should have a solid, stable data model and backward compatible API that allows for easy and seamless integration with the target systems or with, with the source systems. We want to integrate with as many systems as possible, but we don't want every integration to be a year long project. Ideally, the integration should be done fully transparently to other teams so, they wor so their work is uh, interrupted as less as possible or better not interrupted at all. Likewise, when it comes to upgrade to a new version of Spline, we do not want to upgrade everything at once because there might be many components of Spline running across the entire organization and we want the upgrades to be incremental. So you can never basically able to stop everything, upgrade everything and uh, switch to a new spline in one hop. There will always be components of older versions talking to the components of newer versions. So from the perspective of the central service, a backward compatibility is a key. And of course, reliability is a must have thing as well. As I just mentioned, one of the key aspects for us is a stable, generic and flexible data model. The spline data model is based on a multidimensional graph. It's designed in layers, so to speak. It can represent lineage in different levels of details. For example, you can model the lineage just in terms of data sets and jobs, so-called a coarse-grained lineage. Or you might also add the information about data types, attributes, operations, expressions that were used in filters, joins, projects, etc. This will be called a fine-grained lineage. Such flexible design eases requirements for integration with source systems. Of course, the more details are provided to Spline in the first place, the more precise and in-depth lineage you can get out of it later. But if you don't have much details about some specific ETL job, for example, running somewhere on, on, on your production that you want to track with Spline, it does not necessarily mean you cannot do it. You can, but it will probably be on a coarser level. From the architecture perspective, Spline is a set of modules that can be used together or alone. The whole picture looks like this. We have a so-called spline producer API that is used to collect the lineage information from the source systems. Uh, it's available as a REST API for simple use cases or the Kafka uh, service, uh, Kafka consumer uh, that you will probably want to use in your production, which is more robust and available basically. So it depends on what protocol you are going to use you are going to choose a different uh, backends. The lineage information is provided by agents that are specifically developed and are running close to source systems. Spark agent is one example and is available out of the box, but there could be others as well. Collected lineage is processed and aggregated by the spline server and then is stored in a graph database. We use ArangoDB for that purpose. From there, it can be accessed by lineage consumers via the consumer API. Spline UI is a single page application that also uses a consumer API to query and display the lineage information to the users. So now, very briefly about the Spline Spark agent. As I mentioned, Spline was originally created for Spark. So it fully supports Spark Lineage in all details out of the box. It's implemented as a Spark SQL listener and utilizes a publish subscribe mechanism for capturing Lineage information. This allows for completely seamless integration with virtually any Spark SQL jobs without even touching the job source code. 
This is especially cool feature when you, for example, install a spline agent directly into the Spark distribution as a library. And so all jobs submitted to the cluster by any user would be automatically tracked by spline. Also, you don't have to have a spline server to benefit from the Spark uh, spline agent. The agent is highly pluggable and customizable and very loosely uh, coupled with the rest of the spline. So with a little to no effort, you can integrate it with your custom lineage system. In fact, many companies use a spline in their way. Another example of how spline can be used together with other systems is our Open Lineage integration POC. If you don't know what Open Lineage is, Open Lineage is another open source data lineage tracking project. Coincidentally or not, both Spline and Open Lineage projects were created independently at approximately the same time and happen to have a lot of things in common. Open Lineage proposes an open standard and API for lineage collection and is currently a sandbox project in the Linux Foundation. At the moment, Open Lineage supports several data platforms and sources that Spline doesn't. For instance, Airflow. On the other hand, in our opinion, Spline data model is more detailed and precise and is more, and, and is more suitable for capturing a fine-grained lineage. To combine the best of two worlds, we have created a POC that connects Spline stack to Open Lineage stack. We have created an extension to the Spline Spark agent to provide a detailed Spark lineage to Open Lineage system. And we also created a bridge from Open Lineage to Spline that listens to Open Lineage event and acts as another Spline agent providing sp Spline server with the lineage data captured by Open Lineage connectors. The POC for this project is available on our APSA OSS GitHub space. Check it out. Continuing talking about integration, usage, and spline-related work, I would like to mention a few very interesting examples. The first in my list is the article called Collecting and Visualizing Data Lineage of Spark Jobs, created by Alexander Schoenwald and a few other people from BMW last year. I really recommend you to check it out. The article is written in the context of work on the BMW Data Cloud uh, hub that is supposed to be open sourced in the near future. A similar approach to lineage tracking was described in the uh, post published recently on the AWS Big Data blog. The blog post shows how Spline Agent can be used to capture lineage information from Spark jobs on AWS Glue. Riot Games has recently sent us a feedback about successful integration of Spline stack with their internal data catalog. That was an amazing example. Actually, there are more successful stories from other companies, but I cannot uh, disclose them all the, uh, here uh, without their explicit permission, so sorry about that. Now I'll stop talking for a while and let my colleague Daniel to tell you about Spline deployment and do a quick demo. Daniel? Thank you, Alex. Hi, folks. I'm Danny. I'm Site Reliability Engineer at Outreach. Before Outreach, I was working with Alex together almost two years as a DevOps engineer at APSA. I'm going to show you how to deploy the Spline on Kubernetes and demo of Spline as a central data lineage tracking system. First, few words about the Spline deployment in APSA. All Spline's components running on EKS. Currently, Spl APSA has a hybrid uh, infrastructure. There is some data lineage come from on-prem and some inside AWS. And all this story in the Kafka. Spline Kafka Gateway service for consume with the data from Kafka and push them into the RangoDB. Current version of Spline required ordered messages in Kafka topic. The plan first, the events after. Spline UI 
REST and the Kafka Gateway are stateless services and can be easily scaled horizontally. All states storing in ArangoDB. For horizontal scalability of ArangoDB, we deployed in the cluster mode. The current version of Spline, single shard only. Uh, the Spline team working on the multi sharding data structure uh, for increased the query performance. And now is the time for the first demo. I'm going to deploy the Spline on EKS cluster. So there is my EKS cluster with only one worker node. And I already deployed the two um, Nginx controllers. It's for external access to our services. Actually, I will print it the these uh, um, DNS names of the load balancers. Why I use load balancers DNS name? Because I do not want to involve in my example the road uh, 53. So, okay, first I need deploy ArangoDB. I'm going to deploy the version of ArangoDB 1.2.8 uh, and will use the remote repository of the Helm chart. Actually, you can find the more information from official documentation. So there is like a Kubernetes operator for Arango and uh, you can use a Helm chart or the cube manifests from the remote repository. So let's deploy first the SRD of Arango DB. and deploy the operator itself. After um, we spin up the Kubernetes operator, we can deploy the cluster. So from the official documentation, the simplest uh, manifest for um, Arango deployment cluster will look like this. So as you can see, it's using the cluster mode. I prepared the Helm chart for this custom or advanced version. There you can configure agent, db, or coordinators. So this chart you can find in um, the repository spline getting started. Also in this repository you can find the information how to deploy the spline using the docker or how to deploy it or using the EC2 instances. Also, you can find all using uh, all the Helm charts which I'm going to use today in this uh, directory Kubernetes charts. So this is exactly the Helm chart Arango for Arango. So it actually contains the agent information database and coordinators. Um, the agent and database services are uh, REST stateful services and they require the storage. The coordinators are stateless services without any storage. And as you can see uh, from my chart, it's here. I'm going to deploy it uh, with some password and without any TLS. Uh, the TLS actually is working by default. So that's why you need to provide none for um, disabled this TLS. Again, you can find all information in, from the official documentation. After deployed, uh, deploying of uh, Arango cluster, we can start to deploy the Helm chart for the spline itself. So uh, first I need to deploy the um, spline admin Helm chart. Actually, it's just a job. Let me demonstrate to you. So this is spline admin. It's just a job. It will run the jar file. Uh, with some uh, extra parameters. Actually, my parameters is uh, the bay need because 
I'm going to use this spline admin tool and uh, init new database for spline REST API server. The tag, image tag, should be the same version of uh, as our spline REST API server. It's for have the same structure. Okay, let's go back and let's check our pods. I think it should already spin up. All right, looks good. Um, there's a um, Arango DB agents, coordinators, and primary nodes or DB services. Okay, let's deploy the spline, uh, spline admin. As I mentioned, it will deploy, uh, actually init the new database, which actually empty. So it's work really fast. Now we are ready to deploy the spline REST API server. It's required the connection string to ArangoDB and the external access. I'm going to use the ingress. So the external access needs to uh, be able to use it for the producer's API server and for consumer API server. Um, the spline UI, it's consume data from the, this API. So it uh, will use the external access slash consumer. Actually, I will show you just right now uh, the ingresses and how it looks uh, in browser. So let's get the ingresses. Okay, this is the ingress for my REST API. As you can see, the status is up. So it means it's working without any problem with database. So this is a base URL for producer. So if you want to um, push the data, uh, data lineage data to our spline, we will use exactly this producer endpoint. For consume data or have some queries, make some queries and uh, research information about our data lineages, we should use this consumer endpoint. So let's open the spline UI. So as you can see, there is no data found. It's because the database is empty. It's in it without any data. If you can see, if you will see here the error, it means that the spline uh, is do not, spline UI can't connect to the uh, spline um, REST API server. Actually here you can also uh, check the versions of uh, UI and uh, REST API. Um, actually, I use a version lower than the spline REST API. It's because of it's not required to fit, um, you know, the version to match the versions between the UI and the REST API. So jobs done. We are deployed uh, the spline REST API and spline UI. And of course, the uh, Arango DB where we um, store all our files. You just saw how it's easily to spin up the new spline cluster uh, on uh, Kubernetes. In my case, we did it in AKS cluster in AWS. This is set up for the next demo. It's standard ETL process. We have two layers, row and publish, two conformant jobs, A and B, and report job. I have a Databricks compute cluster. Uh, we've downloaded library for spline agent. I prepared the notebook. So first I need to need my spline agent. Now variables. Um, now I'm going to run the job A, job B, and report. 
let's open the spline UI and we can see now the lineage from the data bricks for conformant job A, B and the report. Now I'm going to change the job B. And run it again. In spline, I can see the new data lineage for the job B. And actually, it's contained the new version of it. In new version, I can see already the change. It's using the in our data source file. If I check my downstream data lineage, it's actually have an old version of it. It's because of the new file with the job B I do not use yet. Let's use it. Let's run the report job again. And check and check our report data lineage. All right. Now I have the two versions. In new version, I have um, the new plan for the job B. Yeah, cool. Now I'm gonna show you um, non-Spark example. Let's add for this um, RO file. Let's add the missed um, data lineage. So uh, I'm gonna use the Podman and create this um, post request against my REST API service, Spline REST API server. And in this um, request, I'm gonna like, you know, attach the body for operation read. Um, actually, I'm gonna use this file, which I already have um, in my Spline UI, I already have information that lineage. So I expect it will be more information provided, like how this file was created before. And I'm going to write to exactly this RO file. So let's run it. Uh, okay, plan is created. And now I need to create the event. Event and then the file itself was actually run it, you know, come. All right, so it's done. Let's check our spline UI. I can just reload it. All right, now I can see much more information and I can see this also missed part, how this file was actually created from which process it was created. So um, on top of it, uh, actually, this view is coarse granite lineage view. Uh, now you can see more detailed plan. Mm, yeah, it's like more detailed plan or this one. I think it's bigger. No. So yeah, this is more detailed plan. Um, it's actually contains different operations. For each operation, we can see the output schema, the input schema, some attributes. And what's most interesting here that you can also see how the attribute level lineage. And from it, I can see how um, one attribute can affect another attribute. So. Yeah, for example, this, this. So that's all from my side. Thank you, Daniel. Now, before we wrap up, I would like to tell you briefly about challenges and future work in Spline. So although Spline is meant to be a generic data lineage tracking tool, it cannot do everything. It is still a young project and a lot of features have yet to be implemented. Here's a list of basic assumptions that we currently make about the jobs tracked by Spline. 
First of all, we assume that one job can only produce one output. There can be an arbitrary amount of inputs, but only one output per job. Also, there is no notion of data partitions uh, from the perspective of lineage tracking. Spline identifies data sources based only on their URIs. Spline assumes that the data sources are not concurrently written, while there are some jobs are written from them. Otherwise, it would break causality in spline lineage model. There is no notion of a job version in spline. Jobs are immutable in spline. When the execution plan of some job is changed, spline sees it as a completely new job. Currently, spline mainly focuses on tracking lineage from a batch jobs. We used to have a POC for streaming support in the past, but due to a number of issues, we decided not to proceed with it. It doesn't mean this feature is abandoned. It just needs to be rethought, and we will most likely come up with a better solution and put it on our roadmap in the future. So stay tuned. From the perspective of the Spark agent, RDD operations are not automatically tracked due to limitations of Spark internal architecture. We are currently looking for a way how to overcome it. Currently, our roadmap is focusing first of all on making Spline robust and performant to serve as a central data lineage tracking service in our organization. When it's done, we will be gradually add more features to cover more business use cases and expanding technology coverage. So the more interesting features will be coming. This is all from us for today. The last but not least, I would like to say thank you to my colleagues and contributors for their help and influence on preparing this presentation. I hope this presentation was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to reach out to us on our GitHub space. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.